Hi guys, uh, today we are learning how the ions are formed. Uh, today I'm going to start with some fundamental topic in chemistry, which is an important topic for both the A level and GCSE student. Let's do let's go with some basic concepts in chemistry. Okay, let's start our first topic. You know, that is the nucleus and these are the shells. There are two fundamental particles present in the nucleus. Uh, do you have any idea what are the fundamental particles present inside the nucleus? They are, see, they are protons and neutrons. The other fundamental particle, which is not present inside the nucleus, but it is present in the shell. And these particles are not sta static, they are moving around the nucleus in a fixed path called orbit. So now we learn some charges and masses of the fundamental particles. But I'm using like this is like a pen. I'm using proton, electron, and neutron. Let's see the masses and charges. Mass and charge. The mass of the proton is 1 and the charge of the proton is plus 1. The mass never be a positive and a negative. Mass is a quantity, so it's always a unit. Some student they told me like positive and negative for masses, which is wrong. Now, mass of the electron is very negligible. That's 1 over 2000. This is not the actual mass, but it's okay for the GCSE and A level. And the mass of the proton is, sorry, neutron is one. Now the charge, charge of the electron is minus one, negative charge, and the neutron has no charge, zero charge. Yeah, is that clear? Now look at the, some elements in the periodic table. Uh, can I can I rub this? Yeah, yeah. We can see some elements in the periodic table. You know all these periodic. You know that the periodic table is basically classified into metals and non-metal. Let's see. Now, when you look at the sodium or any metal, you will find two numbers. 11 and 23 or you can find 11 at the top and 23 at the bottom it doesn't matter i will tell you what does 11 mean and what does 23 mean 11 indicates total number of protons which is equals to total number of electron which is equal to total number of electrons 
that total number of protons which is equals to total number of electrons indicate the atomic number or proton number so 11 is nothing but x atomic number or or proton number Now look at the 23. 23 indicates 23 which is a bigger number. Always bigger number represent atomic mass equals to atomic mass which is nothing but total number of protons plus total number of neutrons which is equals to which equal to total number of protons and neutrons that's a good habit guys please copy down everything so that I can go to our next point magnesium which is a metal has also Two number one big number 24 and 12 so find the number of protons electrons and neutrons for the following elements let's do magnesium can you try it guys let's try it it's easy though it's very easy okay let's see so the bottom one atomic number which is equals to number of proton so proton 12 Electron same, 12, and how can we work out number of neutron? Bigger number, 24 minus 12, which is also equals to 12. Let's do one more, like uranium, 92, 235. Work out for uranium, 92, 235. Okay. Did you get the answer? Okay. So it's easy. P equals to 92. E also equals to 92. And N equals to 235. Take away 92. N equals to 143. You can try as many elements in the periodic table. It's up to you. Now, we are moving to one more small concept which is called isotopes let's see what is meant by the term isotopes and how can we work out proton electron and neutron in isotopes first i'm giving you this example let's try this example chlorine chlorine 1735 1737 let's work out p e n then i will teach you what is meant by the term isotope okay you want to try it see easy very easy 17 17 8 17 electron 17 electron look at that Number of neutrons, 18. Number of neutrons, 20. So number of neutrons for chlorine, 35 is 18. And number of neutrons for chlorine, 37 is 20. But these are the atoms of the same element, but they differ in the number of neutrons. Let's see, let's define the term isotopes. So, 
all so toes these are the atoms of same element having same number of same having same number of electrons and protons and pro but they differ in number of neutrons so that's the normally a three mark question for the GCSC they will ask you define the isotopes so these are the atoms of the same element chlorine and chlorine but they have different number of neutrons you can say like they have same atomic number but they have different atomic mass now we can calculate their natural abundance or we can work out their isotopic relative atomic mass okay you know guys each isotope exists in nature by its own fraction those fraction we call them as isotopic abundance they exist by nature we can't do we can't change their isotopic abundance it's a fraction that exists on the surface of the earth different isotopes have different surface of the earth different isotopes have different abundance i will give you some examples examples of natural abundance it is also called as isotopic abundance we will work it out chlorine chlorine just now we have seen 30 35 37 37 and their isotopic abundance it is called natural abundance or isotopic abundance isotopic abundance one isotope which has a lesser atomic mass exists as 75 percent in the nature and another isotope which has higher atomic mass exists as 25 percent in nature their natural abundance is always constant we can't change it but we can work out isotopic abundance by using a spectral technique called mass spectrometry. I will teach you guys when I'm going to deal with a different spectral technique, then I will teach you how to work out its isotopic abundance. But in the examination, whether it's A level or the GCSE, they will ask about to figure out a relative isotopic atomic mass.